Hello everybody, this is TJR. Richard Penniman, aka Little Richard, is dead today at 87 years. He died from bone cancer. Little Richard combined gospel and blues to become one of rock's pioneer artists, standing right alongside other greats like Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Jerry Lee Lewis. And his screaming vocals and furious piano pounding set a standard for high-energy rock performances for decades to come. An influence that you can easily see in an artist like Elton John, who named both Richards and Jerry Lee Lewis as an influence, but who said that Richards pounding piano style was closer to his own. Other artists who have cited Richards as an influence include James Brown, Lemmy of Motorhead, Mick Jagger, and Jimi Hendrix once stated, I want to do with my guitar what Little Richard does with his voice. And while I don't think I've ever actually heard him name Little Richard as an influence, I think you can definitely see this influence, at least in the performance and stage presence of Prince. When his first hit single, Tutti Frutti, was released, Elvis Presley had already been recording and releasing records for about a year. And Richards is quoted as saying that when he first started singing rock and roll, he practiced it privately for a long time because he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to pull it off and that people wouldn't like it. He may not have invented rock and roll, but he added to the dangerousness of it with his flamboyant and genre-bending persona. Born in 1932, Richard sang at a nearby church during his youth. His father was not supportive of his music and accused his son of being gay, which reportedly led to him leaving his home at 13 years and living with a white family in Macon, Georgia. In 1951, he got his first record deal, so this would have made him about 19 years of age. And he is quoted as saying that he started wearing makeup so that he would appear less threatening while playing white clubs. But his career didn't start to take off till he released his first hit, Tutti Frutti, in 1955, the lyrics for which he had to clean up before recording it. And like other early black rock artists of the 1950s, his music and performances crossed racial boundaries at the time and brought at least white and black kids together in a way that hadn't existed before. In Charles White's 1984 biography, The Life and Times of Little Richard, arranger H.B. Barnum stated, Richards opened the door. He brought the races together. When I first went on the road, there were many segregated audiences. With Richard, although they still had the audiences segregated in the building, they were together. And most times before the end of the night, they would all be mixed together. In interviews, musician Frank Zappa stated that racism was one of the early and largely unspoken catalysts for the older establishment's disdain for this new musical genre, which is why it was sometimes pejoratively referred to as jungle music by those who hated it. After a string of hits, Richards suddenly ended his career as a secular artist, and in 1957 began attending Bible college and became an ordained minister and released a gospel album in 1959. But in 1964, he would return to the music that made him famous. After this time, he would become a kind of contradiction, at times becoming open and embracing his sexuality, and at other times rejecting it. I personally am reasonably familiar with Richard's music, but only surface level familiar with his life. If anyone wants to recommend a good book about him, I would appreciate your suggestions in the comments. If you're only casually familiar with the music of Little Richard, I want to recommend the following to either purchase as a physical CD or to stream online. First would be The Georgia Peach, which is a single CD collection with 25 tracks. And for those of you who might want to take a deeper dive, I would recommend the 3D box set entitled Directly From My Heart, The Best of the Specialty and BJ Years. There was a period of time in my life during the 90s when I began to seriously explore the early rock and roll of the 1950s. And during that time, I found myself covering lots of those songs at my acoustic gigs. This included well-known songs like Ready Teddy and Rip It Up. But one of my personal favorites that I love performing was The Girl Can't Help It from the movie of the same name. I used to perform this song solo acoustic and sometimes with a trio, but I always dream that someday I'd get to be able to record or perform it with a huge orchestra. Rest in peace, Richard Penniman, and your music will be remembered for years and years to come. This is TJR, and I want to invite everybody to please share 
their thoughts and memories of the music of Little Richard in the comments section. Everybody take care. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.